So why don't we have more movies with an all Asian cast? This uh, question came up the other day. This uh, question came up the other day. I was actually sitting with my friend Browna and he was talking about this, this new movie called uh, Dirty Rich Asians, which apparently is doing really well. And he was saying like, finally, uh, a movie with an all Asian cast is doing well. And I, was, I thought to myself, hang on a second, that's a bunch of BS. Some of my favorite movies have an all Asian cast. There's a guy never seen a Hong Kong movie like Infernal Affairs or any one of the, I don't know, Jackie Chan movies. Um, how about all those really uh, funny movies like Kung Fu Hustle, things like that. How about, um, you know, our good old friend Bruce Lee. And what about all the cool Japanese movies and things like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I was thinking, you know what, that's a bunch of bollocks. And I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this whole idea that like, oh, they're not putting enough Asians in movies. You know why? Because the world thinks that only Hollywood makes movies and that no other movie industry counts. I mean, even though you've got massive juggernauts like Bollywood, uh, the thing is, China certainly isn't doing the world any favors since their movie industry is awful. And no one's gonna wanna watch a movie with an all Asian cast coming out of China simply because, well, they are terrible. <laughs> The Hong Kong um, movie industry, especially in the 80s and the 90s, um, was fantastic. Not that good anymore, I gotta be fair. But, uh, you know, during that time, you can go look at all the sort of, you know, God of Gamblers and all that kind of nonsense. Some really good, really funny, uh, or really cool sort of kung fu or gangster movies or, you know. Anyway, um, I'm getting away from the point. Japan as well has a pretty good media industry. and various other places too. China, on the other hand, has an awful music movie industry. It's terrible. Now, I know I'm sounding overly harsh when I'm talking about the Chinese movie industry here, guys, but I have to be honest with you. In the 13 years I've been living in China, I've tried my absolute best to like Chinese movies. I really did. I've been to watch Chinese movies in the cinema. I've watched them with subtitles. I've watched them without subtitles. I've watched them with my wife, previously with girlfriends, with Chinese friends. And you know what? They really do suck. And it's not just me who says that. My Chinese friends and Chinese family, they're very surprised if we go to watch a Chinese movie together and it's actually okay and doesn't suck terribly. They're like, wow, you know, for a Chinese movie that wasn't bad. But these are Chinese people saying this, right? In places like Hollywood and uh, other uh, movie industries, there's a heavy... Um, emphasis on being creative and creating something cool. Maybe not so much these days, but at the end of the day, leading up to present day, it's taken years to realize what works and what doesn't. But the Chinese movie industry is currently still very, very immature. It's very young. And so they believe that throwing in a bunch of special effects, Transformers style, and uh, you know, hiring an expensive cast is going to make sure that you have a bestseller, which is absolutely not true, of course. So my Chinese friends and family actually agree with me when I say that I don't enjoy Chinese movies. And it comes down, like I was saying earlier, to a couple of things, but honestly, probably the biggest thing is how stifled and censored the movie industry here in China is. I mean, we all know about the lack of creativity in Chinese education and things like that. That definitely adds to it. But there's so many topics that Chinese movie directors and writers, they just can't approach. They can't have raunchy movies. They can't have any kind of movie that could in any way make China look bad or lose face or the Communist Party lose face. So you have to understand that when they put pen to paper, when they're directing their film, they're incredibly restricted. So it's not really their fault. So what you find is you end up having almost only three categories of film. And one of them is usually a, a historic sort of uh, something about the Red Cliff or the um, Three Kingdoms, you know, that period of time, or maybe a Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasty type thing. Or you have these sort of war fantasy, war of the resistance uh, things, which involve sort of World War II and Chinese fighting the Japanese. And those things are just awful. They're terrible. They're just hate-mongering nonsense uh, which I've talked about in the past and I'm probably going to make a video about that in the future but it's basically uh, movies that are geared to stoke hatred and 
keep society here in China hating Japanese. Anyway, that's for another time. Um, and then you get sort of comedies and that sort of thing, but you know, they're not really all that great, to be honest. It's very muted and very censored. And that's why I think the film industry in China pretty much sucks. On top of that, you've got all the corruption and all the nonsense that goes on in the movie industry in China. Things like cinemas being sold out all the time, but there's no one in them because what's happening is the, invest the investors that, uh, you know, the company that has produced the film, all of the investing and interested parties, they buy the tickets to inflate the box office numbers to make it look like it's a, su it's a successful film so they can drive up the stocks of the business. Because you'll see in China, a lot of people, they watch the box office numbers because they're publicly available and then they'll say, oh look, that company's movie's doing really well. Let's invest in stocks in that company. So it's actually this, this weird situation where they're cooking the books in order to make it look good. Unlike us, we make a documentary the real way by standing around in the rain and just, you know, self-funding it. Anyway, I digress. This is going to be a cool documentary, by the way. Um, I'm walking around in circles. Great. <clears throat> I wanted to get back to the whole point of the fact that you hear a lot of people moaning that, like, Asians are underrepresented in, in movies. And perhaps that might be true in Hollywood. But remember that the world is not Hollywood. And Asian countries like China and Japan and, you know, Hong Kong and Taiwan, they have their movie industries and they do incredibly well. And I would also like to once again remind everybody that Chinese people, Asian people are the majority, right? When it comes to like actual people in the world, right? Especially me living here in China, you know, I walk around for days, I won't see another foreign face. I know what it's like. At the end of the day, what I'm trying to get at here is it doesn't matter what, what kind of color or race the actors are in a film. What matters is whether it's a good film or not, because like this new film has proven, if it's a good film, people will watch it. So it's got nothing to do with race, it's got nothing to do with nationality, it's got everything to do with making a good bloody film. I mean, let's take a look at China's most expensive movie ever made. This thing cost over a hundred million dollars. And not only does it have this blatant fake Daenerys Targaryen ripoff, or is that Trinity from the Matrix? I'm not really sure. Either way, uh, that aside, you know, it costs so much money. It doesn't look good. It's got this absolutely ridiculous looking tomato sort of thing. You know, sorry to say, it looks even worse than that weird marshmallow radish looking thing from Monster Hunt to me anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, add to that some completely cheesy, over the top, ridiculous looking special effects and uh, well, you can see why it bombed so badly in the Chinese cinemas. In fact, they had to pull it the same weekend they released it to re-edit it. So I don't know where that's going. So let's leave it at that, guys. The Chinese movie industry is ridiculous at the moment. They've just had some massive flops because they made movies that were really bad, but threw huge amounts of money at them, thinking that it would be a money game and not actually an entertainment game. That's China. Anyway, until next time, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome. So I thought I'd lead you guys out of this video by explaining to you exactly where I was. You know, I was walking around in circles. This place is actually pretty important. It's quite historical. It's uh, the Lohu border crossing, and it's the busiest border crossing between Hong Kong and mainland China here in Shenzhen. Thing is, I think it's also the original crossing where you could take a train from Hong Kong into uh, Shenzhen. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, but it is the busiest. And not only do people cross here all day doing their milk smuggling or infant formula smuggling, I should say. I have shot a couple videos here actually. Uh, but it's also a fantastic place to go shopping. If you happen to live in Hong Kong or if you're, you know, stopping over in Hong Kong, you can pop over the border and there's this massive building here. It's called the Lohu Commercial Center. And inside there you can buy all manner of knockoff electronics, glasses, luggage, you name it, you can buy it. In fact, uh, knockoff golf clubs are pretty uh, popular over here. Um, I would suggest, by the way, if you do come here, if you're looking for a suit, I can 100% recommend my tailor. This isn't a plug. I'm just saying it because I really think the guy is a genuinely good guy. And uh, he makes all my suits. People always ask me about the suit thing. Well, here's where I get them made. I did make a video about it, so I'll link it down below if you're curious about getting a suit or maybe a, a Chinese dress for your, your girlfriend or your wife or your mother or something like that. Um, 
Anyway, I digress. Thanks for sticking through this one, guys. I know it was a little convoluted. It took me a while to get my thoughts together on this one because I didn't want to sound too insulting, but I have to be honest, the Chinese movie industry is just terrible. But it's not really their fault. It's really all down to the whole censorship stuff. And you do find good Chinese directors, but they tend to, to go abroad to practice their art. So anyway, let's uh, keep an eye on this. Maybe it'll get better. You know, there's always that possibility. So anyway, until next time, you guys know the drill. As always, thank you for all of the support that you give me and my wife. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.